Hi, um, I'm Haley uh, and I'm presenting uh, with Leah and then three of our students today who have been our interns on this project. Um, and yeah, as she said, it's called Crap Attack and it's about gamifying information literacy for and with Gen Z. So next slide, Leah. So basically we're gonna talk about the video game that we're building. Um, and then how it relates to information literacy, um, instruction on our campus, um, how we plan to uh, assess, and then the concept of the game. And then we're gonna have our interns talk about how they contributed and then show a prototype of the game all along with a uh, discussion about our future plans. Uh, next slide. So basically, um, this idea came uh, from a gamification class I took this summer um, at SUNY Poly and um, thinking about how uh, we can make information literacy like very fun um, for students and um, engaging. Um, and to do that uh, with um, a platform or an idea that can be used in person and online. Um, Leah will talk more, but we have a lot of online students, so we wanna reach them as well. Um, and so it was me and Leah. I started building this myself and realized obviously I could not do this alone. And Leah brought all her information literacy um, uh, instruction because she's the instruction librarian on our campus as well as outreach and um and then we got uh lucky and we got um three coders and one designer um so how that happened basically we have a um program on campus called the presidential internship and the president's office will pay students a thousand dollars a semester to work in different departments on campus so we had the idea to put in a request for an intern. Um, and we have a very popular game design program on our campus. So I also contacted the game design uh, departments and let them know what we were looking for. Uh, and we had so much interest that instead of one intern, they gave us four. So we were really lucky. Um, and they have been wonderful as you will see. Um, so we spent this fall um, we had about, I think, seven weeks after everything kind of worked through with the interns. So we built um, a prototype, which we will show today with plans to build the full game in the spring. Uh, next slide. And I think that's you, Leah. So as Haley said, I had the, the task of making sure that the game that we were producing related to the student learning objectives that SUNY has for the framework, as well as the SUNY Canton SLOs. And with the update of the framework, it made it really easy to really focus on the CRAP test and how to evaluate information. And it meshes really well with our critical thinking SLO for SUNY Canton. And so in order to make sure we're hitting those, of course, we have to do the assessment aspect of it. And that's really important that we wanted to really connect with our online students because almost half of our students at SUNY Canton are fully online with a lot of asynchronous classes. So this would allow us to reach out to those classes and allow them to have information literacy that you couldn't do with a traditional one shot, but we can also use this with a traditional one shot. And then we would also be using it for our one credit information literacy class, which is the CETA 101 class. And so our plans for that is on the fifth day, which we'll see as we go through the prototype, we would use a Microsoft form and have them apply the CRAP test to their own research that they're doing. And this would allow us to see if using the game alone provided them enough information in order to do the assessment correctly. So we went through a lot of 
kind of versions of the game. Um, and so again, we wanted to, we chose to use crap, although like some, it's a little outdated, but the reasons why we chose it, one, it's uh, very catchy, students remember it. Um, two, it is easy to remember and easy to apply to levels of a game. Um, and we also thought once we built it with this concept that our students are already familiar with um, is well known, then perhaps in the future we could try um, applying, you know, different levels with different other versions. Um, I know like SIFT and other information literacy kind of um, tools. Uh, so as you, we always wanted to move through the game applying different letters of the acronym. Um, and so what we came up with is that um, you move through them um, day to day. So the world, again, this went through very different versions, um, but with our designer, we came up with this sort of deco punk um, dystopic world. So like, Historically, things have kind of, and aesthetically, things have kind of stopped um, in the 1920s. And there's a huge reliance on like a, this art deco aesthetic, applying this to this dystopic world. And we chose to do our own world instead of staying in the real world, just so we could kind of play with it a little bit more and engage. Um, but we also, um, a lot of our storylines are kind of very familiar to the new world and things that are real world and things that students will definitely have experience learning about. So it's different, but not too different that they can't make the connections between what they're doing and uh, the information literacy um, in our world. So the plot of the game is basically that you are a fact checker for a rare free press in this um, very controlled society. And every morning you are, you seek to prove um, a news article that's coming across your desk. So you have the topic and then you get sources and you decide depending on the level, um, how to understand if they are um, good sources or bad sources or what makes them good or bad. Um, and at the end of the day, you kind of make decision about the article that is going to be published. And so there's two levels to each or two tasks to each round. You have to sort um, the resources and then you have to make a decision at the end. And that decision impacts everyone in the world. Um, I kind of got this similar plot if anyone's ever play, played Papers, Please, which is um, visas and you're checking visas. So um, basically you're going through these things and um, they get harder as you go and you have to apply more um, critical thinking as you go. Um, and yes, as Leah talked about, we wanted something that could be used online or in person and for a long period or a short period. So it's kind of adaptable. Um, as of right now, the prototype we have, which you'll see um, is about a week's, you're doing, I think I think we have four days right now, but I mean, this is something that could just go on and on and get bigger and bigger. Um, so that is kind of the concept of the game. I'm gonna have um, our students um, our interns talk next about how they contributed. So we're going to hear from three of the coders for the game. So they'll talk about what they did. And then um, the one that isn't here today is the designer. Um, so he's working on the aesthetic side. Um, so he hasn't uh, done a lot. He's done sketches and came up with the aesthetic in that. But um, his big task will be in the spring. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. everyone. Oh, go ahead, Clayton. Go, Kyle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, each of us, uh, the three of us here, I'm Kyle, Clayton is here, and Steven is here. We all helped build the prototype. Um, all of us contributed to the design of the game and helped uh, Leanne Haley with 
the ideas and fleshing out what they really wanted from the game. Um, but each of us did go ahead and we've all worked on our own kind of parts of the game. Uh, and we're each going to talk about that. And then we're going to demonstrate um, the prototype that we have. So Clayton, go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm Clay, one of the coders. I have the responsibility of making the game loop. Uh, so every day the player will have to, they'll face a question. They'll have to use information literacy to evaluate the sources. I also had to implement a draggable UI so they can drag uh, the information into the information slots of whether the resource or the source is reliable or unreliable. And then lastly, I also added all the information. So uh, whatever the world building was with like the emails and the sources, whether it be like social media or a newspaper article, like I just added all the information in the game. Um, and then, so I worked on two major systems for the game. The first system I worked on was the email system. So at the beginning of every day, the player gets like emails from their boss as some information about the day and about crap and about what they're going to be doing. So they receive those emails and they can look through their inbox, you know, sort them, delete them, and they get uh, the new one at the beginning of the day so that they know kind of their task. The other system that I worked on for the game is for the end of the day, when we show the player a little newspaper clip that kind of gives them an idea of how their choices are influencing, you know, the world in the story. And I added, you know, the, I made a template for the newspaper and I added all the information for each day, for each possibility that could happen. And I added a little animation for it to make it look fancy. Uh, and I'm Steven. I uh, worked on the Wikipedia for our game. So obviously, as you progress to the game and we learn more of the different uh, crafts and get new information, I basically worked on having some of the important information saved so that way um, uh, people could look back into. So I basically added a way to, I basically added like a Wikipedia page so that way um, uh, the player can like look at any information that they've learned in the previous to kind of, if they forgot something or need uh, or to help so they forgot something they could remember it. And so it could also help them uh, solve um, uh, solve the puzzle that they need to figure out. Awesome. You guys want to show the game then? Or the prototype? I'm going to stop sharing so you guys can share your screen. Okay, I think my screen's sharing. Yes. Yep, we can see it. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so for the first day, uh, we have uh, currency, which is the first uh, letter for crap. And so when you enter the game, uh, before like the game starts or anything, the player has to open all their emails. And so you can uh, read about the email. And so it's pretty much just telling you about the game about the world uh and then as you can see want you to focus on currency of the information and then this is like an email about like what your position is and so your role is to pretty much fact track um the information that's given to you and so the first question is uh one second can't Oh, some of it's cut off, but the first question is, which candidate do you think is corrupt? And so since it's currency, we want to look at uh, if the date is reliable. I believe uh, in this world, the date is like 2030, so it's uh, futuristic. And so that would be unreliable. This was recorded in 2027, so that's pretty reliable. And then there's another email about relevancy. So have been getting some sources, but they have they are coming in so fast, I'm not able to tell if they are relevant or not. Getting to the bottom of this, please help. And so for relevancy, want to see whether the information that's being presented is relevant. So this is talking about president. Um, uh, I don't think this is relevant because it's not talking about any of the candidates. All right. 
your trolls. And this is just talking about a battle, so that's not relevant. All right, so we would like you to be able to participate during our uh, little demo test. So you can do a thumbs up if you think uh, candidate A is corrupt, or you can do a thumbs down if candidate B is corrupt. So I'll wait. There's also uh, the check and the X. If you guys just want to throw up reactions to tell us if you think that it's candidate or I guess a check for candidate A or an X for candidate B and the same with thumbs up or thumbs down. All right, so I'm seeing a, a thumbs down for candidate B. So we're leaning towards candidate B then? It looks like it, yeah. And we'll uh, we'll try and take a closer look. For day one, it's a little ambiguous, but they should be a little bit clearer about what the answers are going to be for the other days, I think. And so the city is saved from corruption. So this is kind of like the newspaper. It kind of shows whether you answered or got the question right. I believe if you chose candidate A, the um, it would something else would appear for the result. And then for day two, uh, the next is authority. And so I believe for this day, uh, it's related to like a trial. And so you kind of have to see whether the person is guilty or not. So we're going to have to use authority to see if our sources is reliable or not. I think this one's a little bit harder. Um, but once we add the Wikipedia uh, to the game, it would make it a lot easier. So I'm just going to put these uh, as best as I could. Facebook, I mean, face page group. And so some of the information or some of the sources don't have like all the information yet. We'll add it later. But just for the prototype, we just wanted to add some something. All right, so is Buster Custard guilty or not? Uh, this one probably will be a hard one, but uh, just to see thumbs up if yes, thumbs down if no. Uh, let's see, I'm seeing one thumbs down and one check mark, so. Um... Does anyone want to be a tiebreaker? <laughs> oh yeah, two check marks. Two, two check, check marks. marks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with yes then. Sprinkle killer remains at large. And so so he wasn't uh, guilty then, so it was someone else. Yeah, uh, someone said, uh, love the demo, but it's hard to make a decision when they just see the information for an instant. So if we could take like uh, another second to like go through what each of the sources say. Oh yeah, for sure. Sorry if I'm going too fast. Um, so day three, we're going over accuracy. 
we have been getting tips from an inside source from the acid wash genes factory saying that the acid rain is caused by the byproduct of the gene making process that is escaping from the smokestacks and into the river. Most of the sources are hearsay from social media accounts. Can you help us determine their accuracy? So this day we wanna focus on uh, the accuracy and so, acid rain has been failing, um, falling in our country over for over 30 years. I've seen metal uh, melt in front of me many times before the factory was turned into acid wash jeans factory. This is not their fault. Um, accuracy, accuracy. I'm gonna just say this is reliable. This is a weather service official alert. Please stay inside for the next eight hours as the Doppler radar is predicting a large amount of rainwater with an extreme high acid content within the factory area. Um, I'll say this is reliable, I guess. Image taken from a newspaper article published two years ago showing the accumulation of waste byproduct in the river behind the plastic sport factory. Two years ago. I'm gonna say this is unreliable. Academic article by Bob Lee. Five years study across the factory system of, oh, that's a hard word to say, shows that there has been a steady increase in waste byproduct going into our air and water systems affecting the acid content in the rain. Five years, that's pretty long, 2030. I'll say it's reliable. All right, so is the factory to blame for the acid rain Yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm seeing mostly yeses and yeah. just one or two noes. All right. So was that more yeses or noes or was that just like a split? Uh, I'm seeing more yeses than noes. Just taking a quick look. All right. Honestly, I haven't played yeses. this in a while, so I kind of for I forget which is correct or not. So I'm hoping uh, I'm going to go with yes, though. So we'll see. Acid gene wash factory closes. Still no end to pollution in sight. So it appears that the factory wasn't the cause of the pollution. Okay, so I'm going to cut was... you off so we can just finish the presentation. I think we have, I think the three days are good. Okay. Okay. So I think that can... last one, oh, sorry, but I think Go that ahead. last one was a little confusing just because um, I think what we determined is that the acid gene wash factory is partially responsible, but it's not the only reason acid rain is happening. Uh, so... Uh, as you can see from our prototype, um, we're still working on it. The interns have done an awesome job. I think the, the issue that Lee and I ran into was we didn't realize how much story building and writing the game would take because um, we are doing that part. Um, so you can see, especially in our prototype, our story needs a lot of work and especially with the continuity. So we've actually been meeting over the break to kind of uh, flesh it out more and really build it with more themes and um, recognizable things um, so that we're ready for the interns in the spring to really have it more cohesive on our end um, because they're doing this awesome coding. Um, so that's great. We are also going to try to hopefully get one more intern then since we worked on the world building um, to then help us do some of the day-to-day -day writing. Um, but yeah, the design, again, we're gonna expand on that once we're working on the real game in the spring. And then 
we hope to have it ready for classes um, in fall 2023. Um, and yeah, so we're so grateful um, for all the help and that lovely demonstration. Thank you guys. You put a lot of work into this, so I'm glad you got to show it off. Um, and we are happy to take any questions now. Or I know there was probably some during the presentation as well. Let's see. Will future plans also include how to sustain it? Yeah, so this was something um, that was important to us and we've talked with our interns. Um, they're building the game using Unity um, and sharing it using GitHub. And um, when they code it, they have notes in all the coding. So since we have a, um, you know, a game design program on campus. Um, I think long time sustainability, um, once they build it and they have all these notes in their um, future students, if we could have um, interns in the future, um, we'll be able to interpret it. And, or um, they can, they also will sit down with us and they have done so, so far and kind of walked us through what they're doing. Um, any other questions? Uh, what would be some disadvantages of gamification? Um, it's not for everyone. I actually do not come from a gaming background. So a lot of this was foreign to me. And that's why, again, we're so grateful for the student perspective. And of course, the game design student perspective. Um, and I guess one other thing that I have definitely considered when we're building this is accessibility. Is it accessible to all students? Um, so that's something we'll definitely expand on in the future. Um, let's see. Have you thought about making your own IL tool to update crap? Um, that's a possibility for the future. I think we wanted something that already existed right now since there's so much work building the game. We didn't want to also build the concept, but I think that's something then if we get the game up and running that in the future, if we wanted to change it, um, we could kind of adapt it to our needs. Um, the template is from Canva, everyone's favorite. Uh, yeah, any other questions? All right, um, well, thank you so much. Thank you, especially to our interns. Um, yeah.